Hey, what's up, you guys? Today, I am here to answer a question that I think is on everybody's mind, whether you are a lover of luxury fashion or you've never bought a luxury piece in your life. This is probably something that has gone through your head that you have asked yourself at least once. And so today, I come with you with answers. I am going to be looking at two items today, one high-end, one low-end, and I'm going to be giving you my honest feedback on what I think of them. Today, you're going to be finding out $700 Balenciaga t-shirts, are they worth it? Let's find out. Two beautiful girls stand before me. This is the 2023 version of the Balenciaga embroidered logo t-shirts. You may have seen this before in different variations. Um, the version before this had the logo on the left side a little bit lower and the embroidery on the back was also a little bit lower. Um, every year or so they come out with a new version. Fashion is an art but it's also a science. So this is the latest and greatest, most recent, most newest updated version of the Balenciaga t-shirt. I also have one from 2021 so I can attest that this is a different cut. Then that one, very slight adjustments, but I think very slight improvements make for an overall much better experience. On the other side of the ring, we have this Uniqlo Spring Summer 2023 limited edition oversized t-shirt in Heather Gray. This one features a pocket. And it was only $19.99, so over $20 with tax. So how are we gonna go about comparing these shirts? Well, we're going to experience them with the senses that we were born with, that God gave us to experience this world. We're going to look at them with our eyes, we're going to touch them with our hands, we are going to hear them with our ears, taste them with our mouths, and smell them with our noses. Okay, so going through, let's start with the very basics, touch. This is the most important part of the garments because the wrong fabrication, it doesn't matter how well you make it, it'll never move, sit, and live the way that you want your piece to. So the Balenciaga shirt made in Portugal is made up of 100% cotton and the trim where the neck is, is made of 97% cotton and 3% elastane. The Uniqlo shirt, on the other hand, is made with also 100% cotton. Now, while these fabrics may be the same, the density is where they differ because the Balenciaga shirt has a very obvious, much thicker knit of cotton, as where the Uniqlo shirt honestly just feels like one ply toilet paper. Heather gray shirts do tend to look a little bit cheap, so that may be on me for choosing the wrong color to compare this to, but it's very obvious when you look at the Balenciaga shirt and the Uniqlo shirt side by side that the Balenciaga shirt has such an opaque, rich, dark charcoal color compared to the Uniqlo shirt, which the looseness of the of the knit of the individual threads of cotton that are creating this fabric are so far apart that it's almost translucent. Like I feel like honestly, if you lift it up high enough and you shine the light, you can see my fingers as we're with the Balenciaga shirt. It's, you, you can't see anything. Like it's John Cena under there. Like you, you cannot see. Comfort wise, I do feel like the Balenciaga shirt works really great for a fall winter moment because of the thickness of the knit. Uh, the wind doesn't pass through as easily, but it's also really nice, big and oversized. So if you're in a hotter environment, like for me right now, I'm living in Honolulu, I can still go outside with this shirt and it allows the wind to come up and under. Uh, but it doesn't feel super suffocating at the same time because it's still caught and it's still very breathable. The Uniqlo shirt, on the other hand, um, I mean, comfort-wise, it's fine. It's a t-shirt, but I think I'm also the type of person that's very aware of how something looks. And so for me, like, I would never walk out the house in this because I just don't think it looks good on my body, personally. So 
touch-wise, we're gonna go ahead and give this to Balenciaga. Now for looks, this category is going to include the construction of the garments, so how they were put together, um, how they lay and sit on the body, just generally like the vibes. So with the Balenciaga shirt, it is a mock neck, which is so, so important. Um, it's a mock neck with a drop shoulder, and these two things together really make the shirt different. The mock neck really tightens it to the neck, and it gives a very nice snatched look, while the drop shoulder helps to relax the shirt a lot and gives it that very boxy feel. And because it's a drop shoulder, it doesn't have that weird flare that you see on the Uniqlo shirt, which is a more traditional crew neck. And the shoulders are also cut like any other t-shirt. So really what makes the Uniqlo shirt oversized is that it's just bigger. I think the sleeves might be a little wider than they normally would cut it. But because the collar is a crew neck and not a mock neck, it ends up just coming off really sloppy. The Balenciaga shirt is very intentional with the proportions of everything. The length of the torso to the length of the sleeve to the width of the shirt to the width of the neck. It's so intentional that when I wear this Balenciaga shirt, I feel like it comes off as a big shirt. But when I wear the Uniqlo shirt, it comes off as a shirt that's too big. And that for me is what really makes or breaks oversized clothing. Because you can do this, do that. You can wear baggy pants, a baggy shirt, but there's a difference between a shirt that's just a couple sizes big and a shirt that is very big on you, but was made and cut for someone of your size and stature. I feel like when I put on this Balenciaga shirt, even though it's huge, it's such a big shirt, I feel like it was made for somebody like me who's 5'5 and 130 pounds. When I put on the Uniqlo shirt, I feel like they sold me a medium tagged as an extra small. And it fits like that too. It's just, it's not cut for me. All right, so for hearing, this is what I imagine I would hear if I went out in the Uniqlo shirt. Now, in the Balenciaga shirt, choke me. Slay. Choke me now. Slay the house choke down. Choke me now. Oh my god. I want to be Slay choked those by boots. Oh Slay those bit off my boots. Those oh my god, I just saw my baby. Go over the thigh boots. Choke me. Boots with lace. Destroy me. Boots when? that duck down a part when? of the Pomeranian. Mom, I'm Mom. disgusting. When? I'm not. Yes. Oh my god, you're just my final four. Strongest in history. Lipsing for your life. So my final thoughts, um, if they're not obvious yet, are that for me, if you have been looking for a sign, if you have been wondering, should I get this shirt? You know, if you've been interested in Balenciaga shirts, if you've had it on your radar, you know, um, and you've been looking for that little push, uh, here I am. I'm throwing you off that cliff. I am throwing you into the pit of fire. Um, into the depths of hell where the rest of us who like Balenciaga are residing and But tailoring can also be brought to the everyday to the mundane to really elevate it and that for me is just what really drives it home for me with Balenciaga is taking a concept as simple as a t-shirt and making me feel this passionate about it because I used to be one of those people. I used to see these Balenciaga t-shirts on Instagram and I used to ask myself, why would anyone spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on a screen printed t-shirt? And I still ask myself that because I don't buy screen printed t-shirts. And here's another thing, if you're gonna buy a Balenciaga shirt, please, please, please buy the embroidered ones. The screen printed ones are not worth that money. I mean, the embroidered ones are barely worth that money, but the screen printed ones are really, they're not going to last you. That screen printing is going to come off. The embroidery will last so much longer, so please don't buy. Holy shit, what the fuck is that? There's literally a bee. This That was either a hummingbird or like a fly that was, or a roach. 
Oh, it's a hummingbird. Wait, what the fuck is that? <gasps> what the fuck is that? It's an insect that is like round and like this. Do you see this big? This big. Okay. Anyways. Balenciaga t-shirts are very intentional. They're very basic, but they're very intentional, and that's what people don't understand. That's what you don't see on social media. I'm also gonna close out this video by saying, if Uniqlo is your price point, if when you go to Uniqlo and you buy those clothes and you feel good, like, that's amazing, you know? The reality is, is that uh, Uniqlo is fast fashion. It is low-end clothing because this it exists in this realm of fashion where t-shirts can go for a thousand plus dollars and objectively twenty dollars is on the low end and i know that that's a harsh reality and for a lot of people tailoring is not something have clothes to wear period is a luxury thing. so i don't want anyone to feel like buying from uniqlo makes them a, a low you know a low end type of person if you enjoy your clothes from uniqlo like that's totally fine uh, my usage of low and high end is purely objective. It's just the world. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I would love to create more content like this, more high end versus low end, you know, socks, underwear, pants. Uh, just give me more excuses to buy more luxury pieces. I am down. I will, I will do that for you. The, my selflessness is never ending. So, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. <gasps> Look, Charlie, we're on TV.